I welcome you all viewers and especially students to this online classes organized by the State Council of Science, Technology and Environment. So today's class will be doing the first chapter of chemistry that is chemical reactions. So let us begin. Uh, a lot of changes take place in our everyday life. So see what happens when raw fruits get ripened, food is cooked, when an iron rod is left outside in the rain. What do we see in them? We see changes in them. These, they are all representing a chemical change as a result of chemical reactions. So what is a chemical reaction? When two or more substances, uh, they undergo a chemical change with the absorption of energy or release of energy, they uh, produce or they form two or more new substances then the changes that take place is called a chemical reaction. So I'll give you one example. When magnesium This is one chemical reaction. When magnesium is led to react with oxygen, magnesium oxide is formed. <coughs> but this uh, chemical reaction, the description of this reaction in a sentence is quite long. So we have a solution. That means we can represent this chemical reaction as an equation. And that equation we call chemical equation. of the chemical reaction with the absolute uh, formula and the symbol. So, for this particular reaction, I can write or represent in a chemical equation. So, for magnesium, we usually write the symbol Mg. Magnesium is reacted, uh, is led to react with oxygen, so oxygen is denoted as O2. And what is formed is magnesium oxide. Okay. So we see here, magnesium and oxygen, they are two substances that take part in a chemical reaction. So magnesium and oxygen, they are called the reactants. And we see here that from this chemical reaction, magnesium oxide is formed. So this magnesium oxide we call product. We put a plus sign between magnesium and oxygen because there are two substances, that means there are two reactants that react in this chemical reaction, therefore we put a plus sign here. And this arrow, it indicates that the reaction is in the forward direction which produces or yields magnesium oxide. Okay. But in a chemical reaction, uh, in a chemical, sorry, in a chemical equation, the equation must always be balanced. That means the number of atoms in the reactant side should be equal to the number of, at, uh, of atoms in the product side. Because of the law of conservation of mass, the total mass in the reactant side should be equal to the total mass in the product side. So if we see this particular example, this chemical equation is not balanced. If we see here, the number of atoms of magnesium in the reactant side is 1 and the, magnesium, uh, the number of atoms of magnesium in the product side is 1. So magnesium is balanced. C for oxygen. The number of atoms of oxygen in the reactant side is 2, but in the product side is just 1. So we need to balance for oxygen. 
for before we balance this equation, there are certain rules to uh, to balance a chemical equation. First of all, we should not change the formula of this chemical equation. All we do, all we have to do is we just have to add just a number of atoms, but not that we have to change the formula. Leave the formula as it is. And if you write the elements in a chemical equation, the elements should be in molecular form and not in their atomic form. Okay, I will balance this equation by hit and trial. That is, we will see from here, we will balance first that element with the highest number of atoms. So if you see here, oxygen has the highest number of atoms, that is 2. So we will balance first for oxygen. So in this reactant side, oxygen, there are 2 atoms. To, ba to balance here, we just add 2 here. So that means oxygen in the reactant side is 2 and oxygen in the product side is 2. It's balanced. But see, magnesium here, it becomes 2. But in the reactant side, there's only one. So we just balance, we put magnesium, one more. Okay? So, let me give you one more example how to balance a chemical equation. If iron is reacted with water, ferrous oxide and hydrogen are formed. Okay? See here. First of all, how to balance this one? We'll see first which element has the highest number of atoms. So we see here, oxygen has the highest number of, uh, of atoms, that is 4, in the product side. Here, oxygen is just 1. So to balance, we put 4 here, so that oxygen becomes 4. We'll balance with the oxygen in the product side. But if we see 4 hydrogen, Hydrogen here becomes 4 into 2. We take this one 4 into 2, which means hydrogen becomes 8. But in the product side, hydrogen is just 2. So to balance this one, we multiply with 4. So hydrogen in the product side and in the reactant side are balanced. So after this one, we see for iron. Iron here. There are three atoms, but in the reactant side, there is only one atom. So therefore, 2 by 3, this side. So we see this chemical equation is balanced. So therefore, iron, check first for iron. Iron, there are three atoms here. And in this uh, product side, there are three. What about hydrogen? In the reactant side, there are four into two. 8 hydrogens and the product side the hydrogen also is 8. C4 oxygen. Here oxygen there are 4 in the reactant side. C4 oxygen in the product side there are 4. So the equation is balanced. Okay, let me give you one simple one. When the hydrogen is reacted with oxygen, water is formed. Okay. See first here how to balance this one. Hydrogen also in the products uh, in the reactant side and in the product side they are already balanced. That means hydrogen here there are two and here are two. See for oxygen. Oxygen there are two atoms here, but in the react uh, in the product side there's only one. So you need to balance for oxygen. So what you do is you just multiply two here. See? Oxygen becomes 2. But hydrogen is increased by 2. So therefore, hydrogen here becomes 4. 2 into 2, we get 4. So in the reactive side also, we should balance for oxygen, or for hydrogen, sorry. We just multiply by 2. So see, the equation is already balanced now. For hydrogen, there are 4. Here in the product side also, hydrogen is 4. Oxygen in the reactant side is 2 and in the reactant side is or in the product side is 2. So this equation also is balanced. So there are, these are just few examples how to balance the chemical equation. And if you use this method, first of all, you balance first that element with the highest number of atoms and then you do the rest. 
If you do like that for all the equations, you'll be able to balance the chemical equation. So I'll stop here now and I hope we meet again. And until that time, stay safe, stay healthy. Thank you.